That's the wrong coffee cup, isn't it? But I'm thinking protopasta coffee cup. <laughs> oh, right. Here, I'm just gonna finish my coffee anyway. All right. All right, so I feel like we're missing a bit of context for this very video. What you're watching right now is the follow-up to the video I published two days ago, where I got to spend a day uh, with Alex at ProPasta and got to make some of my own filaments. <coughs> Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm still recovering from that American cold that I brought home with me. At the end of that day, I also reached out to you guys asking you what you wanted to know about uh, filament making in general or about the materials protopasta uses and makes. And we're going to answer those questions towards the end of this video. But first, let's talk about those more or less beautiful materials I made while I was there. Cool. All right, so we made three spools of, of filament successfully. So that was the first one we started out with. Color? I don't know. It. You guys don't have anything to make ugly filaments with. Like, we were prepared for this. Uh, Sorry. Maybe next time. Give us a little more notice. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> let you know a bit more, a bit further ahead of time. Um, this is the second one we did. I mean, it still has the same tone to it. Um, it does. It's but it's the bit, same colors. Same we colors. Just took out half of one and put twice as much of the other one in. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure about the sparkle still, like green and sparkle kind of. Uh, you should really print it before you make a full judgment. Right, yeah. Uh, still two, two really nice colors. And and then we actually set out to make one that was uh, actually a nice color. And holy wow, did this turn out nicely. Now this is this is real filament. This is not just like a, a quick prototype run. This is same quality standard, same diameter, yeah. lines, everything to production. Yeah, we just, we, I mean, we gave it a little bit of time to, uh, to you know, get the diameter tuned in the way the system does, and then we're making good filament. Right. This is all good, yeah. It, you, you could turn this into production run. It would be really easy to do. And, you know, I have to say, I mean, color aside, I'm a bit biased that the inspiration was a car for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and do you mention that? So this is the, the Lotus uh, Exige burnt orange inspired color. Right, right. I'm gonna be printing some nice stuff from this, definitely. Yeah. All right, now on to some questions from you guys. First off, why are you guys using cardboard spools? Because it's better. Okay, cool. <laughs> good That's good, good short, short answer, short. yeah, well. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, it, we started with plastic. Actually, we started with no spool and reusable spools, folding spools, uh, keep the shipping weight down. We moved to plastic uh, with more capacity based yeah. on community uh, user feedback. And then we talked to a lot of folks and we felt really bad about the this, this, this state of plastic spool waste in the industry. So yeah. we created a cardboard solution. We actually had that uh, like sort of outsourced and a lot heavier and overbuilt. And then this is sort of our second generation of that uh, lightened up with the corrugation. Um, we uh, glue them in house. We have them more mass produced. Actually, um, they're being glued right yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. You can see, oh, see them in the background. The whole thing is is just more scalable the way we yep. make them now. And on the, the 500 grams, it adds 80 grams of weight to the spool. On the one kilograms, it only adds 90 grams of weight. Yeah. So the core is just slightly so bigger. It's it's a lot lighter than, than plastic. It's more eco-friendly, you know, yeah. it's gonna be recycled. We, um, we ship material around the world, so like wherever it ends up, it's got a better end of life. Right, right. Okay, it's good. And you can use uh, like the, the oh, corrugation yeah. for, you know, film and flipping anywhere. Yeah, that's sweet. What's your favorite, useful or pretty materials? I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm the pretty guy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the sparkly stuff. How has filament changed over the years? Are you making different stuff than you started out with, and are you making it to different standards? Um, I think the standard target is mostly diameter based, and that hasn't really changed. The, but is it is it more consistent now than it used to be? Like across manufacturers, maybe even uh, is it better materials? Have things improved there? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say, uh, you know, our, our tool set has become more refined and professional and we've learned more along the way. So I'd like to think that our material is more consistent now than, than it was when we started. Yeah. Um, but we're also pretty meticulous about making things. So if anything, even if the material is more or less the same quality, we've now gotten more folks involved and allowed like a, an organization rather than an individual to create the same or better quality of filament, which is a huge you know, requirement for growing a company. Nice. So, so yeah, and originally our shift for materials was wholly from the engineer perspective, the function perspective right. of creating, um, you know, mechanically interesting materials. Um, we found out that, you know, 
go figure. The fact that you can print them with success is actually a pretty important thing too. Um, Who would have and, thought? Yeah, <laughs> and you know makes the experience quite different. So we've 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 slowed down the pace of changing the resin and expanded the um, you know breadth of finish. And we'd like to continue. We'd like to come back around and continue to open up more options um, from the chemical side, but you know do so at a pace that you know folks can kind of come along with us in a reasonable way. What's what's the biggest pool so far that you made? I don't think we've gone beyond like three kilograms of, or at least three kilogram equivalent. I know we. We're, we're, we don't do these giant spools. Yeah. This, we, we come from making small stuff and uh, three kilograms big to us. So. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry um, to let you down. Yeah, <laughs> I was hoping for like a, a 20 kilogram mega spool or something, but. I did, st I have started taking photos of like, you know, when I see a big cable spool in the back of a truck. Yeah. Uh, like, hey. It's always like, they're transporting filament. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have my Christmas lights yeah. on a, one of those spools too in right, the garage. Yeah, yeah, I rolled them up that way. And, Super easy. You know, Super convenient. A little spool obsessed now. Nice. Um, someone else is asking, what are the additives that go into HDPLA? Can you disclose that? Well, I mean, most of what we're doing is starting with a stable um, chemistry and trying not to mess that up too much. Um, uh, what we did here is took, um, you know, a Nature Works resin and we added our take with color and pearl and uh, glitter and um, what we're doing is you know bringing that to you in a high quality way starting from all the raw ingredients so that includes the, the resin but that also includes high quality um, pigments from powder that we then make our own yeah. master batches or you know the composites or the pearls it's all it's all starting from scratch to like control and get that level of uh, end result that we want. Well, we do have our version three HTPLA, which we kind of shifted slightly back to uh, more of a performance mindset. And we added uh, a bit of elastomer into that to give, you know, P we all know PLA is a little bit more brittle than like ABS or um, like copolyester. So we wanted to, to, to add a little bit more forgiveness um, to the HTPLA. And we also um, wanted to uh, take up a little, sorry, this is a little distracting. Um, we, wanted, we wanted to take up some of the shrinkage in the heat treating process. So the yeah. base resin as it comes from the manufacturer has maybe like two and a half percent shrink. We got that down to about one to one and a half with the, the added right. elastomer. Um, maybe we'll get that down to uh, near nothing. It would be a cool, cool achievement. Yeah. Uh, question for me, why do extruders talk? <laughs> like, you, you told me like each, to one, of them has a, each one of them has a different language. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so if you think um, it, well, voice, not language. If you have one that speaks either Spanish or German, but nobody really knows. Are you gonna have to is. tell us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our so our compounding our twin screw extruder is a German machine, and I think it's speaking in German. But you know, <laughs> hey. Um, and then we do have different voices on the different lines to try to um, you know, distinguish them, but. Um, Boy, I get confused. Um, the voices originally were because, you know, starting as a small team, uh, you know, starting from just a couple guys, um, we we're ch trying to run an entire business. And so the extruders would be running while we're like doing emails or who knows right, what. Right. And when it was only one extruder, you could let it go for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Exactly. And then you needed a reminder, hey, By the way, I, I'm, I'm gonna need your attention <laughs> right, right, right about now. So they basically, we made them shout at us. Cool. It's, it's, it's better than like shocking us, you know? Yeah, or burning something down or, you know, making bad material. Um, and I guess, is, are, are you, do you have any plans to make what we did today with making some, some rad filament? Are you going to make that available maybe as a workshop or something where people can stop by and have like a, you know, mix your own kind of experience? This experience doing this, if I could just do this every day and it, and it paid the bills, like, that, there'd be nothing better. So certainly like it's always in mind of like how do we get closer to what we did today on a reoccurring basis to bring custom as close to the consumer as possible yeah. in a way that we can afford to stay, you know, in business. So um, yeah, and I, I don't know what, you know, what that solution is in the long term or if it's a mix of things, whether that's like pellets for personal extruders, whether that's workshops, um, web-based web configuration exactly, stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways that you can get, you know, that we could bring something 
closer to your personal design to you. Yeah. And I'm curious, I'm, I'm actually, it like really makes the future interesting to not know what that is and to like just keep going through the experience and thinking about those things. Like how do I get there yeah. and making steps yeah. closer. Yeah. yeah. So if you have any suggestions on uh, what that could be, uh, or if you'd be interested in, in interested in attending a workshop yeah. like that, where you get to mix up your own color, um, definitely leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, thank you for your time and thanks for, for letting me make some red film. In yeah, it's been uh, awesome. It's great to have you, really. <laughs> thanks for me. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Get subscribed, support the channel on Patreon if you want to see more stuff like this. And yeah. Yeah, send town back here again, please. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I will be back. <laughs> and you will too. See ya. Thanks. Bye.